All right, peace and blessings, guys. Peace and blessings. Shalom. It's Mark the Messenger. We're back on our video. Before I go over uh, the full armor of God, I want to give you guys some tips, some strategies on talking about spiritual warfare, some things you can get through when you're in the battle, when you're in the battlefield. Remember, every single day is a spiritual warfare. Just a lot, of, a lot of times, guys, people are just unaware of what's taking place because they're operating in a carnal mind, so they don't understand what's really taking place in the unseen realm. So let's get it. Let's go. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and share this video. Number one is remember your testimonies in your life. What does that mean? Your testimonies, all the things that you went through, you you overcame, okay? You overcame whatever well, whatever it was. Maybe you got like a sickness in your life or maybe like um, someone who loved passed away or maybe um, like you got like a heart broken from like a relationship or a marriage, okay? Remember that you overcame those times. So this is a good thing to meditate on, guys. Always remember that. And when a testimony, I highlighted this. I had to remake this video, guys, because my neighbor was going crazy, so I had to remake it. But I highlighted it. And testimonies is a test, okay? And testimonies is a test. So always keep that in mind. Keep that in mind, guys, when you're going through it. You overcame so much already, so why quit now? Why give up now? Why put in the towel in now? Okay, number two is don't be afraid or fearful and remember the Lord. Okay, it says in Nehemiah chapter 4, verse 14 says, And I looked and rose up and said unto the nobles, and to the rulers and to the rest of the people, be not ye afraid of them. Remember the Lord, which is great and terrible, and fight for your brethren, your sons, and your daughters, and your wives, and your houses. Okay, so not only does God fight your battles, but He also fights your sons, your brothers, okay, your daughters, and your wives. And He even protects your house with the angels, the angels of the Most High. Okay, the Bible even says that. He who fears the most high God will have angels around him to protect him in the spiritual realm. So always keep that in mind, having the fear of God in you. Okay. And what's the fear of God, guys? The, uh, according to the Bible, it's departing from evil, hating evil, departing from evil. And, you know, you know, keeping that, keeping the Holy Spirit in you, guys. That's the fear of God, right? The fear of God, you know, not living a life of disobedience, not living a life of willful sin. All right. And hating evil. All right. So number three is fill yourself up with faith okay sometimes when we're going through a spiritual warfare we could get doubt we could get through maybe some confusion you know remember all these are all just attacks to the enemy when you get in confusion okay or when you're getting tempted when you fall into temptations okay so always understand that fill yourself up with faith when when trials part uh, start to pop up okay even peter peter could have walked on water but he started to lose faith he started to lose faith so always keep that in mind always have faith no matter what Keep that in your mind. That's, that's, your, that's your also another weapon too, having faith. Okay. Remember, our weapons, the guys, when it comes to spiritual warfare, the Bible says it's not carnal. Our aura weapons, when it comes to fighting against the enemy, fighting against his tactics and his minions, the agents, okay, it's all spiritual. It's not with our hands. It's not with trying to hurt or harm them. You know, none of that. It's all spiritual weapons, okay? Number four, because remember who you are in Christ. This kind of correlates to number one, okay? Christ was the first one who defeated the devil. So when you have the spirit of Christ in you, when you have the faith in Christ, always keep that in mind that if, if he's in you, then who who could, who could be against you? Who? Nobody. Okay. Number five is cling on to the shepherd, Jesus Christ. Right? Jude chapter one, verse 24 says, Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceedingly joy. Okay. So always keep that in mind. Jesus is the shepherd. Okay, he's, he's the one we need to cling on to, man. The son of God. Number six is nothing can separate you from God's love. This is probably one of my favorite Bible verses, uh, not just with spiritual warfare, but just in general. I'll, I'll read it for you guys. So this is in Romans chapter eight, verse 38 to 39. And notice how in most of the stuff I'm going over, guys, there's always a Bible verse. And that's why I told you guys, you know, I, I give you guys the example of Jesus Christ when he was fighting against the devil. He fought back with the word of God. And I'm going to go over that with the armor of God, with the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. I'm going to go over that too in the video. I'm going in this video. Okay, so this is Romans chapter 8, verse 38 to 39. Okay, so it says, For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. So keep that in mind, guys. Remember, Bible verses, when you're getting attacked, whether it's by people or maybe it's the demonic strongholds, whatever the case may be, Bible scriptures to attack them back, okay? And uh, people ask me this too, all the time about the demonic strongholds, guys. You want to pray against it or like witchcraft. When witchcraft is attacking you, you got to pray against it, okay? Number seven is the righteous are never forsaken 
and God never leaves you. Okay, this is in Psalm chapter 23, verse 4. It says that, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, thy comfort me. Okay, so the righteous are never forsaken. And, you know, God never leaves you. So always keep that in mind. Uh, like I said, when, I, when a spiritual warfare pops up, you could feel like God's not there. You could feel like, not all the time, of course, but especially if you're like new to the faith, you could it could feel that way. But this is why it's important to know God's Lord. Okay. Number eight is, uh, you know, I was just talking about earlier, is to stay in prayer. Okay. I'm going to go over that too when I'm, when I'm talking about the full armor of God after this, after this slide. Okay. Uh, staying in prayer. Okay. Stay in prayer. If you get into the temp, when you fall into temptation, what did Jesus tell the disciples? Uh, when they were, when they fell asleep, when Jesus was about to be killed, okay, he told them pray, at least he fall into temptation. Even the Bible says that pray without kissing. So what does that mean? You need to pray nonstop. When you're always praying, you're not being given over to your, you know, those temptations because you're too busy praying. And prayer is a spiritual practice. You're feeding your spirit when you're praying. Okay. Number nine is to repent and close all doors. Okay. Sometimes we gotta take accountability. Sometimes, guys, the devil could be attacking us because we maybe we you know committed a sin. Maybe we opened a door. So this is why you have to take accountability and you got to repent, you know, and repent with the intentions to not sin again, you know. Now, of course, I already know, guys, people always tell me that. Like, I know we all fall short of the glory of God. You know, no one's without sin, but we don't want to be living a life of willful sin. We want to be living a life of disobedience, okay? We want to try our best we can to be blameless, okay? That's the best we can. So close all doors, okay? Any doors you might have opened through, you know, whatever sin that you were committing, just close it and ask God for forgiveness, which is going to be number 10. Uh, we all know forgive. So uh, forgive other people, lest you uh, forgive other people so God can forgive you. And I learned this, you know, a couple of years ago is that sometimes when you forgive, it's not just forgiving other people. Sometimes you got to forgive yourself for your wrongdoings, your faults. Forgive yourself. OK, if God, if you know God is merciful. OK, so best believe if you committed something. Now, I know there is one sin that's unforgivable, which is a blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. But outside of that, God will forgive you. OK. And so just keep that in mind. You always want to make sure that you are forgiving other people and also forgiving yourself. All right. You don't want to have that grudge in your heart. And I cause I know some guys, I get it. People betray us. People hurt us. People use us, lie to us, cheat on us, whatever. Right. But you just want to forgive. You want to keep, and that's how you get to keep on growing in life. Because if you just keep harvesting that energy, that negative energy, you're going to stay stagnated. So it's important to forgive. All right. I'm going to show you guys a slide of a spiritual warfare with the full of God. Next one. If you haven't already, guys, make sure you guys like the video. See you guys right now. All right. We're back at it, guys. So I'm going to go over list by list. I try to do draw. I try to draw a helmet. I try to draw a shield and a sword, but my drawing isn't the best. So I just said, all right, I'm going to stick to words. So let's get Let's go, guys. The helmet of salvation. What is that? What's the helmet of salvation? Okay. So when you're getting attacked, because remember saying he tries to plant seeds in your mind, seeds of corruption seeds of, to get you to sin to get you to go against god okay seeds of oh i could do this disobedience okay so you have the helmet of salvation to fight against those demonic strongholds that he's trying to plant against you so the helmet of salvation is important okay and the bible even talks about guys spiritual warfare in uh, isaiah chapter 59 verse 15 to 8 to 21 it's a long verse but it talks about that in the old and new testament okay so the helmet of salvation is important so you don't have you're not led to confusion Okay, confusion is a weapon against the enemy. The, 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 God doesn't confuse us, the enemy does. So when you have the helmet of salvation, you won't be led to confusion. Okay, number two is a shield of faith. Ooh, you need this with these devils and these demons, these false accusers, uh, these uh, tares, children of the wicked one, children of Satan, they're gonna attack you, okay? These agents, they're gonna attack you, but you have that shield of faith. So all those attacks, you won't be faced. You got the shield of faith. Now, remember guys, this is all spiritual. So yeah, I might be doing this, but you can't see it because it's a spiritual shield. Okay, so you got the shield of faith on when they attack you. It even says this in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 16. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fury darts of the wicked. Okay. The wicked, they're gonna try to get you to, they're gonna get you to be discouraged. They're gonna falsely accuse you. They're gonna call you, oh, you're a false Christian, you're a false prophet. They're gonna just slander because that's what children, that's what people of darkness they do. Okay, so but when you have the shield of faith on, you ain't faced. You a warrior of the most high, you ain't faced, guys. And especially with um the helmet of salvation. Okay, this is in verse 17. It says, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Okay, which goes into number three, the sword of the spirit. How did how does Jesus Christ, the Son of God, how did he defeat Satan? With the word of God, the sword of the spirit. Every time the devil attacked him, because what's the what's the attacks the, the the weapons of Satan? Lies, deception, 
to steal, kill, and destroy. Okay, so he tried to lie to Jesus. He tried to tempt Jesus. Those are all. Those are his swords. The, the devil. That's his swords. Jesus, his sword was the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, which which talks about it. And that's in verse 17, okay? The word of God. So every time the devil should attempt him, Jesus attacked back with the word of God. He attacked back with the sword. Jesus was spiritual. Jesus was a spiritual man, okay? So next one up is a breastplate of righteousness, okay? The breastplate of righteousness, is, which is talked about in uh, verse 14, it says, Stand therefore, having lines girth about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, okay? So the breastplate of righteousness, when you get attacked, it won't matter because you're protected. Now, when you get attacked, you have, you're, you're righteous, so you're not gonna you're not gonna want to well, like let's say someone should have slandered you. You're not you're not gonna fall back and slander them back. Okay, you are protected with the breastplate of righteousness. So we operate like godly beings. We operate in the image of God. Okay, so that's what the breastplate of righteousness is all about. And next one up is the boots of peace. Okay, boots of peace. So even the Bible says, if it's possible, be at peace with all men. Okay, so when we have the when we have the so when people like laugh at us, scoff, troll, mock, and all that type of stuff, right? We got peace on. So we just keep it moving. Okay, we just keep it moving because we're living in peace. We ain't trying to harm nobody. When, we, when we're out on the streets preaching or we're out on YouTube, social media, all these platforms, okay? We got peace. When the scoffers, we don't entertain that. <laughs> we, we just don't. We got peace, all right? All praise the most high for that. Next one, up, no, next one up is the belt of truth. Okay, the belt, the belt of truth. So we know the word. We're equipped in, okay? The, the truth, the truth is in this, the spirit of truth. So yes. This is what we need, guys. This is one, two, three, this, all the six, okay? Talks about this in Ephesians chapter 10, verse uh, 18. But I want to read verse 10 to 12 with you guys real quick. So it's following my brother, be strong to the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Check this out, verse 12. Everyone should know this verse, okay? For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So those who are in the dark, always understand, guys, it's a light versus dark. Is good versus evil. It is Jesus versus Satan. It's a child of the child of God versus a child of the devil. Always understand that your enemies, as a child of God, is going to be those those who are of the darkness, those who are the Satan's army. Okay, so always understand that. Don't don't think about oh that person's racist or that. I mean, and, and racism doesn't exist. But I'm just saying like it's spiritual. It's just demons using them to hate on you. Okay, so don't don't operate carnally, guys. It's all going to operate spiritually. So this is how you this is how you build up your spirit. And, you know, give you guys some, some tools, okay? Prayer. Oh, let me add this. Let me add this. Let me add this. Which I added in the next one, but this is important. Repent. I spelled that wrong. Yeah, what the heck? Man, what the heck am I doing? I spelled that wrong. Hold up. All right, so. Repentance. Okay, so. All right, number one is prayer. Okay, so let's check this one out. So this is uh, verse 18. It says, Praying always with prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all preserve, uh, preservance and supplication for all saints. So praying always. Okay, like I said earlier, when you pray, you're not giving over to temptation. So prayer is important. Or always be praying. Well, especially when you're spiritual. Not, not just not in your spirit. I mean, every single day is a spiritual warfare, but you always want to be praying, guys. Always want to be asking God for strength. Okay, that's going to feed your spirit. And the more you feed your spirit, you won't be giving over to your flesh. Okay. Number two is we fasting. Now fasting is optional, but I believe that people, as a believer, you should fast here and there. Now it's up to you. Fasting is between you and the creator, not between a YouTuber. Because I'm telling you, it should be something that you're being led by God to do that. It's a form of humbleness. It's a form of uh, denying yourself, and it's a form of feeding your spirit. Okay, and many other things too. And the Bible even says that when you fast in secret, when you don't uh, tell other people, God, God will reward you openly. Okay. Next will be reading the Bible. So reading the Bible, why? So you could have the sword of the spirit. So when the when the deceiver try to deceive you, you won't be led astray. Yeah, people saying that God is a woman. I mean, or like Jesus was not. They said that, they said that Jesus was just a prophet. Okay, now that's, that's blasphemy to me. That's blasphemy. All right, next is fellowship. It's good to have. You know, even the Bible says that God loves those who do uh, brothers who dwell in unity. It's good to have like minded friends. I know that we're in the separation time. I'm going to make a video about that pretty soon. I know that it's the times where God's dividing the sheep and the goats, dividing the wheat from the tares. But if you if you find like-minded brothers or like-minded sisters or family members, okay, uh, you want to have some fellowship, guys. You know, other believers, iron sharpens iron. I believe that's important. Okay, next up will be wisdom. Okay, the Bible says that wisdom is a defense. So when you're in a spiritual warfare, wisdom will preserve you. Wisdom will lead you to what, what to do. It's a defense. Okay. Next is understanding. It goes hand in hand. Having an understanding that you're in a spiritual warfare. Having an understanding that we don't battle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Having that understanding. Next up will be obedience. Okay. When you're obedient, you're untouchable. Now, sometimes God will allow 
like I said, the test is like how he allowed Satan to attack Job. So sometimes it could just be a test, okay? New levels, new devils. All right, you, the testimony, the testimony is a test, okay? And the test, and after you pass the test, here comes the blessings. Next up is the fear of the Most High God, the fear of God, okay? Having the fear of God in you, that's strength, that's power. And also repentance, okay? Living a life of repentance. Did I spell that right? I forgot to put the end. Oh, well. <laughs> oh, well, okay. So I hope you guys learned something with this video. If you haven't already, smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, and share this on all social media platforms. I love you guys so much. Check out this end screen too. Hopefully, I'm going to put somewhere on here. All right, I'm out. Peace.